In this video, we're going to take a look at solving uh, a couple of problems, two problems, uh, using combinations. And these are just counting problems. And in the first example, you're asked, how many different sums of money can you make with these coins? Now, you're not actually asked what the sums are, although I will list them, just how many would there be? And so we have a nickel, uh, a dime, a nickel, a quarter, and a loonie. Uh, this is Canadian currency if you happen not to live in Canada. So this is worth 10 cents, 5 cents, 25 cents, and $1 or 100 cents. So we're going to count them first. So we could take one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these. Okay, now when I say one, a single one, like the dime by itself, for example. And so the dime by itself is 10 cents. So I'm not taking two or more. I'm just saying that uh, all the sums of money, well, we could take them individually. So a dime is 10 cents, the nickel's five, the quarter is 25 cents, and the loonie is a dollar or 100 cents. So there's four different sums of money right there. Now, we don't really call them sums, I suppose, because we're not adding, but there are those who actually would be an amount of money. Now, we could next take, them, take pairs of them. That's what my second diagram over here is for. So I could, for example, take a nickel and a dime. And a nickel and a dime is 15 cents. Okay, so that's a pair. I could also take a dime and a quarter. Uh, 10 and 25 is 35 cents. I could take the quarter and the dollar. Uh, loony, which is a dollar twenty-five, or it could take the loony and the, the nickel, the five cents, to get a dollar five. Now, I could also take this pair right here, the a nickel and the quarter, or the dime and the dollar. Okay, so if I take the dime and the dollar, that's a dollar ten, and the last one we're using two is the nickel and the quarter to get thirty cents. So that's all the number of ways you can you can take two of them together to get different sums of money. Now we could take three. So, for example, a dollar thirty comes from taking the nickel, the loony, and the quarter. So, between the two of those, that's thirty cents plus a dollar makes a dollar thirty. Uh, we could instead uh, leave the quarter out and just do the nickel, the nickel dime, and, and the uh, loony, and so that's a dollar fifteen. We could leave the uh, nickel out and do a dime, a quarter, and a loony, so that's a dollar twenty-five plus ten is a dollar thirty-five. And of course we could leave the loony out and just do the quarter, the nickel, and the dime. So the quarter, nickel, and the dime together is forty cents. And then we could take all of them together. All of them together as a dollar twenty-five, thirty-five, and five more makes forty, so a dollar forty. So that's all the ways listed. Now the, what I, I'm this is problem solving with combinations, so that's we're going to talk about combinations here now. So this number here is the number of ways we can take four objects and choose one of them at a time. This is six because it's actually selecting two objects from four different objects, okay, groups of two. Um, it doesn't matter what order you take them. So for example, if I said nickel and quarter gives you 30 cents, and somebody else says, oh, the quarter and the nickel makes 30 cents. If you list them in a different order, it's still the same sum of money. So that's why it's a combination, not a permutation. This, there's four of these here because there's uh, three ways, sorry, four ways to select or choose three objects from four different ones. So four choose three, what we did here to get the four. And then there's only one sum here using all of them because four choose four, four objects taking all four of them uh, gives you one. So, so four choose one is four, four choose two is six here, four choose three is four, and four choose four is one. So if we add up four, six, four, and one, there are 15 different sums. You can count them, one through up to 15. So there's 15 of them. Now, one other thing I want to show you before we get into another example is the one thing that we didn't do here is we didn't pick none of the objects. And that would be called four choose zero, is there's one way to select none of the objects. You see, you, most people wouldn't consider none of the objects to be a sum of money, but there is, there is one way to pick nothing. And so four choose zero is one. It actually is a way to, well, not pick anything. So it's, the, it's one of the ways to pick a certain number of coins. Okay, there's one way to pick nothing. Now, if you add 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1, you're adding 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, and 4 choose 4. Notice that all those combinations, if you add them all, would add to 16, because 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1 add to 16. 16 is actually equal to 2 
to the power of 4. And the reason that there's 2 to the power of 4 or 16 ways, or one way to count this, is you could say, well, there's four objects. And for each one, we can either pick it or not. We can use the loony or not. We can use the nickel or not. We can use the dime or not. So since there's four of them, you can actually count the total number of ways you can use them, or like the whole sample space, as there's two ways to pick this, two ways to pick this, like use it or not, two ways to pick this, times two ways to pick this, which is 2 to the 4th, which is 16. And that's called the power set. The power set, which is the total number of ways you can pick anything from nothing up to all of them and everything in between, is 2 to the power of the number of objects. So that's the power set. In some cases, you don't use the empty set, but picking nothing, it doesn't make sense to, like in this example, but it is part of the power set. Okay, one more example. Uh, a euchre deck, euchre decks have only the nines, tens, jacks, queens, kings, and aces in the four suits. So this is an entire euchre deck here. Okay, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, ace in diamonds, spades, clubs, and hearts. That's the whole euchre deck. And two questions. It says, in how many ways can a five-card hand have three or more kings? Well, three or more kings, the number of ways you can pick three or more kings, is going to be, and a lot of people, when they say three kings, they forget about the other two cards. There's five altogether. So three kings means three kings and two different cards that are not kings, non-kings, you could call them. So there, you could have three kings and two others three or more. You could also have four kings in the hand. You can't get five because there's only four available. But the four kings would be four kings and one other card. Well, how many ways can you do each of these? So the number of ways you can the, uh, select the three kings, there's four available and we're selecting three of them. It's a combination question because the order doesn't matter. If you, if for example, let's say you got the king of diamonds, king of spades, king of clubs. clubs. If you held them in your hand, the king of diamonds first, the king of spades next, and the king of clubs next to it. If you rearrange them and do, let's say, the king of clubs first, and king of spades next, and the king of diamonds next to it, it's the same three cards. It doesn't matter what order you hold them in your hand, it's the same combination of those three cards. So that's why this is a combination. Number of ways we can pick the two others. Now, there's 24 cards here altogether. Four of them are kings, so 20 of them are not kings. So the two other cards are could be selected in 20 choose two ways. Again, it's a combination because it doesn't matter what order you hold them. If it was the Ten of Diamonds and the Jack of Clubs, uh, to go Jack of Clubs, Ten of Diamonds, this is the same two cards, so the order doesn't matter. Plus, we would go, there's four choose four ways to select the kings, and then there would be one other card. So 20 choose one for the other one. You multiply these because this is one hand. For every four choose three ways to select the three kings, times there are 20 choose ways, two ways to select the other two cards. Plus, and then we... Uh, add this product, there's four choose four ways to select the kings, which is actually one, times there's 20 choose one way to select the other card. So we evaluate all of these. Four choose three is four, 20 choose two is 190, four choose four is one. There's only one way to select all four of the kings. And then 20 choose one would be 20. There's only one, 20 ways to select one of the 20 cards. And so if we multiply this and add them 760 plus 20, so there's 780 uh, five-card hands that have three or more kings. There's the space here, 780 five-card hands that have three or more kings. Uh, last one says, how many five-card hands have two or less red cards? So two or less. That, so that could mean two red cards, one red card, or no red cards. So the number of ways you get two or less red cards is either two red and three black, or it could be one red and four black, remember has said five, or you could get no red at all, and then all five of them are black. So we gotta figure out the combination for each of these. So the red cards, there are six and six, there's 12 all together, so there's 12 red and 12 black. So the number of ways we can pick the two red cards would be 12 choose two, there's uh, two of the 12 red cards, and there's three black, so tw times 12 choose three for the three black. Plus, and then this is another way to do it, so 12 choose one for the one red card, and 12 choose four for the four black cards. 
plus and some people would, would leave this combination out to, to get no red well 12 choose 0 is 1 actually so leaving it in doesn't matter that's still okay you could just some people would just write the 12 choose 5 because they're all black okay five of the 12 cards that are black are being used so uh, again I'll uh, I'm gonna bring my calculator over here just to uh, show how to evaluate these combinations so for example 12 and I'm gonna go and get my combination function so it's number three there 12 choose 2 is 66 and nice thing about the graphing calculator is you can go second enter and then I, I want 12 choose 3 for the next one so that's 220 um, to do something like uh, 12 choose 1 okay so 12 choose 1 that's going to be 12 uh, remember uh, the other uh, formula if you don't have to happen to have a combination function in your calculator you could do for the 12 factorial for example 12 factorial divided by and remember there's two factorials in the denominator one of them is the 4 factorial and then the other one is 12 minus 4 which would be 8 factorial so 495 is what that's going to be and of course I could if I wanted to uh, do it with a combination function 12 choose 4 it's 495 so uh, that's a little bit about evaluating the combinations so again this was 66 and 220 uh, that's 12 times the 495 I just did. Uh, that's 1, and then 12 choose 5 is uh, 792. And so um, evaluating all that and adding those three numbers together is 21,252. So there's 21,252 five-card hands that have two or less red cards chosen from this Euchre deck. And that's the end of the video.